Before we get into the video, shout out to our sponsors, Subside Clothing Brand. Subside is a new, up-and-coming clothing brand established in Bristol that is looking to add something different with their clean designs that celebrate their roots. You can find the link to all their social medias in the description of this video. From the Terrace Podcast and Subside Clothing Brand, it's a match made in heaven. Support the boys, support the grind, shop Subside. Hello and welcome back to the From the Terrace Podcast and to another edition of Champ Talk. Regan, there's been plenty going on in the Championship of late. Some bad predictions, some good predictions, some sacking, some hirings. And that is where we are going to start. Nigel Pearson last night was announced as the Bristol City manager until the end of the season um, with the expectation that he will, as long as he doesn't take them down, then get a a further contract on top of that. Um, Opinions on the appointment? Not one that me and you particularly foresaw, was it, really? Uh, no, not at all. Out of the ones that we talked about in our last episode, uh, don't even think we really we really mentioned his name apart from going through um, other people that may be uh, may be in a position. But yeah, he got it. And by the by the looks of what uh, the replies on the Bristol City tweet, oh, the Bristol City fans seem seem happy with that. And I, I can't see why not. He's an he's an experienced manager, a good manager. Almost saved uh, Watford last season. Almost. I think that that, that team was just dead in the water already by the time he took him over but he's shown time and time again he's a very he's a very good manager and a team that once again lost uh, to like set the seven losses in a row now when they lost to Barnsley they, they needed a bit of experience because they haven't had they haven't had that in a in quite a while someone to come in to have almost a decade of league experience to come in and really steady their ship and I think out of the candidates we mentioned I think many of many of them could really offer them offer what Nigel Pearson can give you. He's one he's someone too steady a ship pretty much as we saw at Watford. So I think it's I think it's a good appointment in the end. It'd be interesting to see how how he steadies this ship as well as uh, if he does what he can do in the transfer window for next season as well. Mm, I completely agree. I think that in terms of the appointment, I mean we know that the the main focus of Bristol City is to stay up this season. I mean me and you both don't really think they're gonna go down anyway. There's too many teams below them. But just to have that reassurance, so you can have a solid foundation. And as he, if he saves them as quick as he can, um, mathematically, then he can start to build for the future, which is obviously the, it, the more time you get to build, the, the hope for the better it's going to turn out. And he can start to decide what players he wants to keep. For Bristol City, got a lot of players out of contract in the summer. I think it's a good appointment. Yeah, short term, you know Pearson's going to come in, take no nonsense and motivate them. It's a very good motivator. We saw that at Watford. We saw that at Leicester with the, the, the remarkable survival. Didn't quite work for him at Derby. But I feel so it's good for a short term. In terms of long term, he's also got potential to be good. We know what he did with Leicester. He did I an mean, absolutely brilliant job there. Um, you do wonder... I think there's a couple of reservations I have. I think the reservations I have are potentially with Pearson as a character. I'm not saying... Uh, people would seem to uh, outline him as some sort of dinosaur. I don't think he's that. Uh, I think he's very much, he's very far from that. I just think that he has his ways and he's very set in his ways. And that if um, the hierarchy don't put 100% of trust in him, which they haven't done with other coaches before, um, then you may see arguments and a bit of an, 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 a bust up there. And, and I think if this is, this is to go wrong, it'll go wrong for off the pitch matters rather than on it. Um, but, but maybe that's a good thing for Bristol City. Maybe it's a good thing that they're going to have someone, a manager who you'd expect would challenge the hierarchy and be able to bring his own players in. He has such a knowledge of the game that he'll know exactly who he wants by the, by the end of the season. And I, and I think he's got the coaching abilities to be able to coach the team that they currently have there. So I think it is a good appointment by Bristol City. I just think this is definitely... Like, like, my first thoughts were, this is either going to go very well all going to go very badly and it's going to blow up in their face but I mean in terms of City fans they know that um, Mark Ashton's there they know the land stands are there they, they, they just want some sort of some sort of positive news and Pearson is that um, and I've seen a couple of little rumours online that Mark Ashton could be getting involved with a new ownership at Ipswich Bristol City fans seem very excited because I think that would mean he'd leave his position at Bristol City but 
that is that is rumours at the moment and that's far from anything concrete. But yeah, Nigel Pearson, I think I mean we get surprised by the appointment, but I think he's a good one in, in honesty. Good good appointment by Bristol City. Um getting on to another managerial appointment. Um was Jonathan Woodgate has been announced that he'll be the head coach of Bournemouth until the end of the season. He's had an indifferent spell in charge of the side, Regan. Um, thoughts on what this means to Bournemouth's playoff hopes and whether you think Woodgate is the man who can who can take them up or at least get them into the top six? It's, it, it, it's a bit of a toss-up for me. I'm not really sure how to feel because in some games that we, which Woodgate's been in charge of, we've seen real glimpses of Bournemouth being like Premier League standard Bournemouth, which we saw for a few, season, a few seasons ago. But other but other performances like the like the one the weekend when they lost QPR and uh, and just quite a few other games to be quite honest they're no no nowhere near what what we've seen them before and it's I thought what Bournemouth needed and what every team needs to get into the playoffs really is a bit of consistency in your results mm-hmm. and I've got to say in his tenure so far I think Woodgate has given anything anything but consistency with the results at the moment. Uh, I still stand by what I said that I think they should have gotten for a more experienced manager. I know Woodgate has experience as a first team manager, but that's only for about eighteen months or so. When I say experience, and I don't mean Harry Redknapp experience, uh, but I mean I mean some somewhere in the middle as such. Maybe even a Paul Cook again, because obviously he didn't get a job again. Um, but so, somewhere around that, with a nice level of experience, I think that would have that would have been best. But obviously the um, the higher ups of Bournemouth like what Woodgate's doing. He likes what likes what plan he has set for the future. And if if that's the future in the Championship, which personally I think it is, because I mean their results as of late with Woodgate in charge uh, does is not a playoff team. And now they're keeping him on. I don't see why that's suddenly going to change. Um, but if it's for the Championship in the future, then I'd like to see I'd like to see what he does because I'm not writing them out of the playoff picture next season because he still has a transfer window or two to try and get in what he wants Yeah I, I, I mean I agree I, I don't think it's particularly the, the, the right appointment um, It's it just seems like it was I, I get if they're looking for the long term future, if they're looking for the long term and Bournemouth aren't um, worried about not going up this year, if they think that I mean, he's given, he'll give us a chance going up, but I mean, Woodgate's not going he's to, no, he's no guarantee, is he? He's going to take you up. And they're thinking, well, we'll make a more long term decision in the summer. I understand that, and it's probably a sensible thing, but you do worry with these teams who come down to the Premier League at the parachute payments. We've seen very much you do have to go up in those three years, otherwise, you're down here for a while. And I feel like, although I hate it and I hate that. The teams who come down can just throw money at things, throw get the best managers. I think it is sort of needed for those clubs because they need to get back in the Premier League. Because if you're a club that's been probably relegated from the Premier League and then you're down into the Championship, you can start to dwindle and the money starts to fade, and suddenly you're just another bog standard Championship side again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm I'm not con- which is more I'm not convinced by the Woodgate appointment. But to be honest. The, the talk of Thierry Henry, I really hope that's not the avenue to go down in the summer because I don't think that's the right idea either. Um, but yeah, yeah, not, not a particularly amazing appointment. It doesn't blow me away. And in all honesty, not because Woodgate's a terrible manager, I just think he's an average one. He's okay and he's still learning. You've got to remember, he's still learning. I, I, don't, I can't see Bournemouth getting the top six with Woodgate in charge, especially if the form of the team to blow them in recent weeks. I think that... Um, yeah, I, th- I think I think Bournemouth have made a mistake appointing Jonathan Woodgate in all honesty. Um, Regan will get on to sort of the, the, the only game I'm going to speak about from the previous game week, and that is Huddersfield 4, Swansea 1. Um, Huddersfield conceded, no, Swansea, sorry, conceded a fifth of the goals they've conceded all season in one game. Previously, they conceded 15, they've now conceded 19. Four goals in one game to Huddersfield. I mean, it's obviously we didn't predict it, but is this the start of a blip for Swansea? Regan, we've seen other clubs have them. Brentford lost three in a row. Norwich had a poor smell. Are we going to see Swansea start to fall apart? And obviously, Jamal Lowe coming off injured, and then they struck their new sign in Morris, who came on, came off injured as well. So now they're going to be lacking numbers up front. 
Yeah, very true. Uh, it it could it could most definitely be a blip because these players in the Swans team have an experience of so experience a game like that where they've been truly humbled, mm. and um, this yeah this could be a massive kick in the teeth for them because I'd imagine the consensus around the dressing room up up until this game was that oh we 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 are defensively amazing and we we are going to get a point at least out of this game because that's what they that's what seems to happen and. With, with what's happened, which, by the way, has probably ruined a million of people's ackers to start off with, mm-hmm. uh, I think that this I, this could see a bit because Swansea's team isn't isn't amazing, uh, man for man. It's not it's not um it's not an amazing team. I know even beginning of the season we had we actually had doubts about their defence because mm-hmm. um, it wasn't as good as well wasn't as good as last season because they didn't have a lead about there like um, Van der Horn etc. And maybe now that They've been exposed, I guess, a little bit by conceding four. Maybe this could be. Well, I'm not saying where they're going to see four every game, but maybe instead of uh, of a two-one win, it's going to be a two-two. Instead of a, a three-one, it's going to be a three-three. They'll concede a few more goals and drop a few more key points, which is, which will inevitably, which could inevitably, see them slip out of the top two place because, excuse me, the the where they are in the top two is mainly because of their defence. And without that defence, well, well, luckily they got away with um, Brentford losing as well. Otherwise, they would. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in there. No, they wouldn't be in there, would they? No. Um, beware. Yeah. Hmm? Beware. Uh, top two. They're not in the top two. No, it's in. If Swansea won, would they be in the top? Two? Yeah, they would have been in the top two. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. So they they got they got away with Brentford not winning. So the the gap is still close, but. If yeah, if this is a blip and Brentford, which is, they're due to get back on course, I mean that's that's what I, that's what I personally think anyway. If this is a blip, then and they start seeing a few more top two could easily slip away from them and they'll be stuck in the playoffs. Yeah, I think that I think is 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 you've got you've got to make sure we don't overreact. It's it's one loss, although a ridiculous loss, four goals. It's it's the manner of it is the manner of the loss that makes you think that it's it's the if Sonsi had just lost this game one nil, you'd be like. Clearly, just had an off day in front of goal. And it, the fact that they've conceded four, you think well, that defence can be got out then. It is penetrable. And I know you can't be perfect for a whole season, but like you said, there's a lot of young players at the back there. They do have the likes of Carl Norton and, and Brian Bennett, but they don't always start. You have the likes of Cabango, Gurhey, um, Freddie Woodman in goal, young, young players there. And you think that. Uh, is that going to knock their confidence? Because as soon as you start second guessing what you're doing, that's when things go wrong. And I'm not saying it's going to be an immediate downfall. Swansea have got Coventry in the week, and I fully expect you'd expect Swansea to win that game. But yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head in terms of are these one nil wins going to start turning into draws? Are these two one wins going to start turning into draws? Are these nil nil games they're going to lose one nil? Are they going to like, these games where they Swansea have been not been blown many sides away. They've been keeping it very close. And if you're going to be like that, if your defence suddenly gets that little bit worse, then you're not going to be able to get as many. You're not going to be picking up as many wins. And I think that'll be the concern of Swansea fans. Along with, um, I don't know how long Jamal Lowe out is out for, but I didn't. I know the new guy Morris. I believe did his ACL, so uh, he's we're not going to see him this season. Suddenly you've just got Andre Ayew up front. Does the team shape have to change a little? I don't know, but yeah, it's it's a very significant result if Swansea won. You'd expect them to get back. You'd expect them to get back on track, but for the, for the season in the final run-in, it could be very significant of how this season goes. And it wouldn't surprise me, like Reen touched on, if Swansea starts to concede a lot more goals. Um, anyway, that is our uh, review of the, the the week's games and the week's uh, talking points. Regan predictions. How did we get on this week? Well, first of all, I need to I need to apologise to the viewers because I actually got the score wrong last week because I didn't put in the in the Bournemouth score. So we actually got an extra point each. Yeah. So um, you know we'll, we'll we'll take small dubs while we can because we definitely need them. Let's just say that, especially after this week, um, which which was a draw. Uh, it ended um, four, well out of the twelve. We got four, four each, which um, isn't. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, uh, I, I mean, in a week where Swansea have lost four ones, Huddersfield, I think, is acceptable. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, I'll quickly I'll quickly run through run through them again. We got both got Barnsley against Bristol City right. Cardiff a humbling Preston to be quite honest. We got that right. Norwich beat Rotherham, uh, and you got Stoke to beat Luton, and I got it right with QPR. And that's one of my proudest ones. Is QPR being uh, Bournemouth? Mm. So that was uh, four four week, and overall it was a amazing one forty three to one sixty score. 143 to 160 to see. I've, I mean, 17 overall. I've been losing ground, but I've made up ground in the last couple of weeks. A draw this week, steady progress, Regan. And if progress is steady, and we'll hopefully it'll get to the end of the season, and uh, two points will meet, you'll be going down. I'll be going to bang, and I'll beat you to the predictions. No, oh, okay, maybe not then. If you beat me in the, in like a playoff final or something, I will cry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the playoff final, and everyone's going like, "It's the ninety million pack. It is the prediction game. It's the prediction game." <laughs> um, we we got uh, plenty of action, midweek action to talk about in the championship, and the first game we're going to get into is at St Andrews. Curse that place! I'm not a big fan. Uh, and Birmingham are hosting Norwich City as the first game midweek. Could this be the revival, Birmingham City? They got three points on the book. No, not not really. Uh, no. They beat ten men, Sheffield Wednesday. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't really have much else to say. I think Norwich are going to win. Norwich are going to win. Then Norwich are going to uh, bump them in. Puki Puki Buendia linking up again for goals. You just, I mean, they do have them, and clearly the two Norwich talent players. I know you can say this about every team, but can you imagine Norwich about Puki Buendia? I mean, we know what they're like about Buendia. That it just feels like they they do everything for Norwich. I think mean, I mean they're two brilliant brilliant players, obviously. Um, yeah, Norwich are going to win that game. It's, it's, there's no doubt about it in my mind. Derby Huddersfield now. Hmm. Now off the back of Huddersfield's latest result, you might change your mind on what you initially would have thought in this game. Uh, I'm I'm not going to. I'm going to stick with it mainly because. It's weird because I actually said in the in the predictions last week that I I tend to usually back Huddersfield at the John Smiths and obviously I should have done, but their waveform is absolutely terrible and I can't look past that. And Derby are a better team because they performed admirably against Watford but still didn't get a result. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm going to say that Derby going to win. Yeah, because Derby gave Watford a very good game. Um... I would expect Derby to win this. I'm tempted to go for the draw though because of how many goals Watford have been. Uh, oh, sorry, Huddersfield have been scoring of late. I am tempted. You know, what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for a draw. I think. Um, obviously, I've got so much hope in Derby's Wayne, uh, Wayne Rooney's Derby, but Huddersfield have been scoring a lot of goals recently. And although Derby are good at the back, they don't tend to score loads themselves. I think it could balance itself out, and we could see um, could see a draw. Middlesbrough versus Bristol City at the Riverside. The first game with Nigel Pearson. He's not actually going to be taking the game. Um, he's going to be in the stands, I believe. But you would have thought he'd have some sort of influence. Uh, how do you think that's going to go at the Riverside, Regan? It's a good one for your first first game, isn't it? It's Nigel Pearson versus Neil Warnock. That is an absolute crack if I've ever heard it. Um, but I think it's because... If it not, if Nigel Pearson was on the touchline commanding everything, I think I may I may have edged Bristol City slightly, maybe gone for a draw. But the fact is, impact won't be like in full effect yet against a Neil Warnock team, which have current have picked up results a bit lately. I mean, really good win against Reading. We should should have really touched on that because that's a big win for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I am going to say Middlesbrough are going to continue their research because I'm going to say Borough. I'm going to say Borough too because you 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 said it there, Nigel Pearson. Very much an impact manager. Will, will have the impact, and I'm sure he will by the time City play on Saturday. Um, but you, you can't help but think, yeah, like this team's in complete disarray. They, they, they're not going to suddenly go overnight from a brilliant, uh, a terrible team to a brilliant team. And um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Yeah, they're not going to go overnight from a uh, terrible team to a brilliant team. No, yeah, no, 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 I wouldn't have had any time on a training ground with them because they would have travelled up to Borough before, I mean, early this morning or last night. So it's going to still be very much the same team that's been struggling of late. I, I believe in Borough. I can wipe the floor with them, so I'm going to go for a Borough win. Luton, Millwall, Kenilworth Road. Luton really have dropped off, Regan. Um, Millwall picked up. 
I think a few weeks ago we'd have called this a different way, but uh... we can still call it a bit a different way because they drew nil nil with Wickham, uh, which isn't tremendous, uh, shall we say? They love a draw. They love a draw. I think they prefer draws to wins. Yeah, I mean they love nil nils. That's for sure. They really love sucking the life out of the beautiful game, don't they? Um, I think I'm going to have to back Mill on this one. I usually tend to back Luton on, on midweek nights at Kenilworth, but I can't look past their bad form and Millwall are making that playoff charge and I expect them to continue to do so. I'm going to go draw, Egan. <laughs> uh, Luton, like we said, usually better at Kenilworth. Millwall, love a draw. Been better recently, but I mean, if you draw, draw to Wickham in the week, you'd, it's not like they're thumping sides, is it? So, um, I will go for a draw between Luton and Millwall. Rotherham and Nottingham Forest at the New York. What are we saying? It's a bad time for Rotherham, isn't it? They've got, they have face Cardiff, Bournemouth, Norwich, and I've got Nottingham Forest. Uh, yeah, I can't... I, oh, they're, some, they're, they're all right at the New, at the yeah, New I, York. I, don't think, I think me and you actually don't mind Rotherham. It's just that they're in a hard run at the moment. And is, it, is it a case of just Forest are too good for them at the moment? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, Forest ain't, ain't been great, but they did beat Blackburn, so I think it's safe to go not in the Forest. Um, Regan, I do hope you've got the games up there because my uh, phone has just run out of charge. Oh, right? lovely! Yes, luckily for you, I do. <laughs> oh, but very well said. I'll go over like you then. Um, the last game on the Tuesday night is. <laughs> Uh, bottom of the table, Wickham against High Flyers Reading. What are you saying, Bill? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the role reversal. I don't know if I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, Wickham Reading. We will, we will switch it up, Reed. Go on. Um, Wickham Reading. Wickham Reading. <laughs> is, is, do I, need I say more? No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Reading. Uh, right. On to the Wednesday nights. On to the Wednesday night fixtures, and um, I'm on Sky Sports, so literally half of these are like in complete wrong alphabetical order. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run them through quickly in my head, and I know the first game on the Wednesday night for a fact is at Oakwell between Barnsley and Stoke City. Barnsley, Stoke, Stoke. A bit, a bit of form recently, Regan. They, they, they won games, which I mean, you couldn't have said a couple of weeks ago, but Barnsley are on fire. I just feel like you can't, like, is Stoke have been, well, 3 0 win against Luton can't be underestimated, but Barnsley aren't on fire. They're beating everyone. The high press in Bristol City, but they, they, um, I know Bristol City aren't exactly goal machines. They limited them to one shot the whole game. That high press is working. Barnsley win. Barnsley win at Oakwell for me. This, this is this is weird, um, but I'll go. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, Stoke, um, you beat Sheffield Wednesday, and you beat uh, an out of form Luton team, and Barnsley continuing their good run. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go for uh, a Barnsley win as well. I can't help you imitating me. I don't like it. I don't like. The, the next game uh, is the. Two very out of form teams, Bill. We've got the low flying, high flying bees of Brentford <laughs> against Sheffield Wednesday. Oh. Brentford, need to, Brentford need to pick themselves up a bit, Bill, don't they? They, they do, Regan, yes. <laughs> oh, God, I don't even know if I can predict the win, in all honesty. Brentford, um, no one's quite sure how long Ivan Tony's out for. It is a very short term injury, but that doesn't mean he'll specifically be back for Wednesday. Rico Henry. Pulled up with a hamstring injury. Brentford have no backup left back as they loaned him out to Swindon. It's not just three games losses in a row, and then you think, oh, they'll bounce back now. They've got to. Brentford's team's being dismantled a little here from injury. It's, yeah. it's hard to predict a win, you know. I'm going to go for a win because, I mean, I said I couldn't see three losses in a row, but I can't see four. And I just think that Thomas Frank knows what he's got now at his disposal, at least for the next few weeks. There's got to be a better plan for Marcus Force. Marcus Force is a very talented striker who scores goals, as we've seen by statistics. For, for like half the season, he was still like the third championship top goal scorer or something ridiculous, and he'd only played like six games. Um, 
yeah, but the Brentford's plan, it did like against Coventry, it seemed like they were playing as if they had Ivan Tony, and Ivan Tony's a very different striker to force. So he, he does need to figure out that plan. But Sheffield Wednesday just lost to Birmingham. To Birmingham. So surely Brentford get back on track. I'm not going to say it's going to be convincing for Brentford win. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, d- I do believe that they do need to change up their style a little bit um, towards uh, towards Marcus Force over Ivan Tony because, like you said, they went for the Ivan Tony approach when he's not in the team. Um, but I think they can sort that out. And like you said, Sheffield Wednesday did just lose to Birmingham. So, going to have to go Brentford to get uh, back in the win column. Uh, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, but... You can't be up against one of the worst teams in the league, so you're going to have to. The next game, a tough game, a tough game possibly, Bill. Swansea City, obviously, got hammered by Huddersfield, come up against uh, Coventry, which obviously recorded a very good win at very good win at the weekend, their first win in a very, a very, very long time. Could we see Swansea concede a few more again, Bill? What do you think? Hmm... I don't like this. Regan has, Regan has, uh, you give him an inch and he's taken a mile when he's, pretty, <laughs> he's, he's presented. Uh, I'm going to go Swansea just because it's Coventry. I know Coventry beat us and they, they actually look um, back to what Coventry are good at. Some nice pressing, playing through the thirds quite quickly. They, they look they looked quite decent, but it's just like, uh, I don't want to get overhyped on Swansea losing 4 1 thing. And I, I, I expect them to beat a team this low in the league, but. Like I said earlier, in the future, we may see Swansea drop some more points, but I thought I'd go for a Swansea win. It's it's going to sound like it's going to sound really bad that it sounds like I'm just copying everything you're saying. But the the games that I've the games that I'm saying second are basically well, in my opinion, givens. Uh, I I think that Swansea, I could I could see them draw potentially, but uh, I it's safer to go for a Swansea win and just. Coventry just came up against Brentford on a bad day, I guess. So I'm going to say that Swansea will get back on track. But I won't be surprised if it's a draw, but I'll go for Swansea nonetheless. We'll move on to the, the quarter weight kickoffs, Bill. Uh, j- just the three of them. We'll start off with um, Blackburn against Watford. Uh, Blackburn in a bit of a, actually, in a terrible run. They've lost four in a row now against a Watford team which have won three in a row. Uh, surely it can only go one way, can't it? I think so because I've seen calls for Tony Mowbray to be sacked, which I think's a bit far fetched. I mean, what he's done for that club is brilliant. Although you would say he does have a good squad at his disposal now, and that consistent that they have a consistency and a lack of consistency. They just can't put runs together. They just can't do it. Um, just as you start to think they're going to be a good side, they they do like fall on the bounce. Like you said, I. I it's a Watford win for me. It's just that the, the, the feeling around Blackburn's gone a bit, even though they, they when they lose a couple, it never seems to get too down. It feels like it's dropped quite a bit now, that feeling. Maybe like the, the thoughts of the, the chance of playoffs is sort of fading away. I'm going to go for a Watford win because just they constantly winning at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I hate to do it to you, but I've got to go for uh, I have to go for a Watford win as well. Blackburn were about four points off the playoffs in a couple of weeks ago. Now they're 10 points off. And I can understand fans' point of view that you've been in and around the playoff pretty much all season, and now now you're now you're in the bottom half of the table pretty much, and you're ten points off, and you're the same amount of points as Preston and QPR, which at one point we both tipped for relegation. Um, well, QPR anyway for unknown reason. Uh, Don't worry, so- Bill's phone is. Back on track so he can get into the next prediction. Doesn't matter. Watford are going to win. The next game, Bill. Oh, oh, he likes this role now, does he? Okay. I like it. Um, I mean, there's only two games left. Let me have this line like what I can. Um, the, the, the second or the penultimate game, if you will, as um, Mr. Taylor would say, is against Bournemouth, uh, between Bournemouth and high and high flying Mick McCarthy's Cardiff. This should be an Regan. absolute cracker. This one. What are you going to say for this? Pressure's got to Regan. Is the pressure going to get to Jonathan Woodgate? Yes, it is. Cardiff are winning at the Vitality. Four goals against Preston. Score a couple before that. Another couple before that. You can't. They're scoring goals. They're not conceding many. That usually means you win football matches. They're going to do it. Bournemouth. <laughs> They lost the QPR as well on the weekends. If they're losing the QPR, they expect them to lose to Cardiff. So I'm going to go for big mixed boys to win in Bournemouth. 
Yep, your logic is astounding. If they score and they don't concede, they win games. That's quite simply how the how the game of football works. And yeah, I'm gonna have to go for Cardiff as well. They won. They've won five on the bounce, and I've got to be honest. In every single game they've won, they look quite convincing. And if they can grab an early goal, which, well, based on the way they're scoring, they could probably score quite a few early goals if it comes to it. Uh, I think Bournemouth are in trouble. So I'm gonna say Cardiff as well. And for the with final that, game, one second, before we just move on, with that, uh, let me just get it up quickly. That would, I if it, it yeah, yeah, if it's as long a as two the happens, Cardiff would be into the playoffs. Now that, yeah. that is about as good as a job you can do in the championship. What Mick McCarthy would have done to have Cardiff in the playoffs after that. what was he when they took over fourteenth, fifteenth? Yeah, very Un- true. Unbelievable job. Anyway, I'll let you. Have the last minute thing. We'll get on to the we'll get on to the final game. Uh, t- a team that's out of form against team that is one of the most informed teams in the league, I guess you could say. To Bill's disgust, uh, is Preston North End against Charlie Austin's Queens Park Rangers. QPR beating teams in the in the top half of four games in a row and come up against a a team that isn't in the top half. Are they going to fare against a a worse team? I guess you could say in Preston. Well, QPR are one of those teams who. They build up a fan base's expectations and then they let them down again. Um, saying that, though, that is my gut feeling that QPR may let them down again. Saying that, though, Preston just lost 4-0 at Cardiff. Preston have not been good lately and QPR are one of the most informed sides in the division. I think it'd be bonkers to go against the form, really, so I am going to go for a QPR win. As much as it pains me to say it. I think that may be the first time we've ever said that uh, on this, unless you, pro- you maybe, no, even against Wickham, you back Wickham. So that is probably the first time you've ever backed QPR on this channel. Um, a part of me does think that all it takes is just Preston, what we've seen time and time again, where they're in a down slump and then they out of nowhere win 4-0 because that's just what sometimes happen- happens with Preston. But... Yeah, I think it's got to be a bit. It's, you have to be pretty foolish to go against the the team that's the team that's winning all the time, and it's it, it's surprising. It is surprisingly hard to call because you just can't trust QPR over a long period of time. Just I think just because I hate QPR so much, I'm going to change it up. And also because we've, I think we've gone the same for every single prediction. So I'll, I'll mix it up for the viewers. And I'm going to say that Preston are, are, are finally going to get a win. And uh, yeah, that, that's my time in the you spot. Know, I respect that because you've given the, the channel some good karma there. You need to balance out the world. You know, not everyone, you can't have everyone in the world back in QPR. I mean, things would just go to pot, wouldn't they? It'd be like the next apocalypse. So you've got to weigh it up. And Regan has, and Regan's done the, the Regan's done the um the the good man's job. He's the good Samaritan, is Regan, and I and I and I say fair play to him. And uh, anyway, Regan, would you like the pleasure of doing the outro this week? I, I no no. There's too many things that can't be that they can't be matched, and I think that you sh- you should continue. That is our championship predictions over, and that means that is this edition of Champ Talk done. If you did enjoy the video, remember to like it, subscribe to the From the Terrace podcast YouTube channel, leave us a rating on iTunes, follow us on Spotify, and we'll see you in the next Champ Talk.